A skilled forensic anthropologist can deduce a great deal about an individual simply by studying their remains. The age they were when they died, the kind of work they did, the diseases they suffered, their whole quality of life. In this case, what's really important is that Langebeek's team has been able to figure out what the muisca ate. From teeth, we know a lot about diet. You can see here how flat teeth are. Teeth was used for grinding. This individual probably had a lot of corn in her diet. In most societies, you can use diet to separate rich from poor, elite from lower class, but not the muisca. The muisca did have more or less the same diet, regardless of social status. And one thing is striking. He sees no signs of malnutrition, no poverty. That's something no European society of the time could claim. On this evidence, the muisca life was a good one. There are more clues in the way these bodies were buried. We are investigating an archaeological site south of Bogota where we found 700 skeletons from the late Muisca period. And we are trying to know more about health, diet, and social status. Time and again, he's found that Muisca graves hold more than bones. There is a lot of gold. And not just in the burials of a select few or an obvious elite. Archaeological evidence about the Muisca society supports the idea that gold was not concentrated in the house of the chief. It was in many places. Even the most uh, common Muisca family had access to gold. Langebeck believes it's easy to see why the Spanish might have been impressed. In their own society, gold was concentrated in few hands, in churches, kings. Very important people had gold, not everybody but that was not the case in the Muisca society. Everybody had some access to gold, and that was amazing for the Spaniards. 